Good morning, everyone. I'm Matt at Mr. Maple. And I'm Tim at Mr. Maple. And today we've got a great 10 at 10 for you. We're going to talk about 10 of the 20 trees getting listed today. You can go on at, at 10 a.m. on mrmaple.com to see that full 20 listing. If you want to know ahead of time, sign up for weekly emails on Mr. Maple, and you'll get an email with the full 20 that can be listed. Typically, emails out about 9 o'clock, so you'll get a little bit of a heads up. Hey, happy 10 at 10 Tuesdays. I know a lot of you guys look forward to these 10 at 10s. We certainly do. We enjoy doing it this way. It's a really fun way to get these out. And a special thank you to all our international viewers. I'm loving all those comments. I did it last week and it was just fun to see, so I'll say it again. Throw a comment in the comment section below and let us know where you're watching from on these premieres. Uh, we love putting the Tenant 10s up as a premiere, so these air every Tuesday at 9. And uh, just gives you a little bit of a preview of what's coming. You can actually see some size examples and kind of get a little better understanding of what's going to be on today's Tenant 10. So we're going to start up today. We're going to start up on this side, you said? Yeah, we'll start here with uh, maybe the most popular. There's a couple here I could guess from, but uh, one of my favorites for sure on this list, uh, we have Acer Palmatum Seho. Now, this is an excellent dwarf. Uh, we joke that uh, it's actually one of our oldest videos on our website. I think you got a Seho video. It's like at least 10 years old. It's ancient. Yeah, yeah. It's, go watch that one for some good cringe value right there. You, you'll, you'll see me in the past looking completely different. I'm a lot younger, a lot more hair on my head. And this is, as we call it on that video, we think it's one of the ultimate bones out trees. Yeah, it's a really fun plant. It kind of is a, uh, an oxymoron as it's a vigorous dwarf. This tree doesn't get very big, but it does flush out a lot. Uh, we like it for bonsai because it puts on a lot of interior branching. So it fills out with a nice round shape and a lot of density, but it also has some of the smallest foliage in the Japanese maple world. Yeah, these small leaves are small with the first flusher growth. The second flusher growth is even smaller. So that makes this tree really give the appearance of a much larger tree on a smaller tree or bonsai. Yeah, this one will actually leaf out in the early spring with a bright purple border to it. New growth flushes will have that as well. Excellent small tree. It does tend to get out there quickly for a small type, but then not get too big. We list this one as four to five feet, by four to five feet wide, even in 10 years. So a nice compact shape. This one is gonna be a little bit more globe shaped. So it's gonna be a little bit more of a ball than your typical Kiyohime types. It's a little bit more upright than those. So don't think of it as a mushroom or that low kind of Kiyohime type, but more as a round, small globe. I think it is, probably the, one of the best trees we do for bonsai though. It's an excellent shape and it already has some of the smallest foliage. So you're already ahead of the game there. Yeah, excellent little dwarf, great for containers as well. And this one can handle full sun up to zone eight, zones uh, five through nine with this one, but sun up to zone eight. So this is one of the craziest trees that I love. This is <laughs> Nisa Sylvatica Zatico Twist. This one just has some nice twisting, contorting habits. And I love this plant. It was, I believe, uh, named by one of our good friends. Yeah, this was introduced by Todd Lazane um, with some Cajun ancestry. So he liked to get that in there with this fun plant, calling it Zydeco Twist. Uh, you can see where it gets that name from. I mean, it is a contorted plant. It has some of the most contorted branching of any woody ornamental I've ever seen. Yeah, the branches literally just keep twisting. And that gives this plant such a fun, unique habit, a very neat contorted habit even when this plant is out of leaf. Now, this is a uh, Nissel Sylvatica, so the fall color on these are what are famous for that Tupelo fall color. You're gonna get some amazing oranges on this. I mean, it is yellows and oranges, but primarily that bold, bold orange is what I love about this one, the fall color. Now, being a Tupelo or a black gum, this plant is really easy to grow for most people, and that contorted habit makes this probably one of the most ornamental black gums I think you could have out there. Fits, you know, it's not a very fast grower when it comes to, it's not gonna make a real large tree, mm -hmm. but this one just has a really nice contorted habit. Mm -hmm. So it really fits in the ornamental garden and really adds something very unique and different. You know, it's not a Harry Lauder walking stick tree, but it could give it a run for its money for contortedness, right? And it's got that same kind of gnarly every direction. And I would, just say, really funky I would say better plant. fall color too. Oh, by far better fall color. I think probably a better overall foliage aesthetic than a Harry Lauder walking stick tree but some of that similar habit that everybody likes about that. So next up, we've got another Japanese maple you've seen before on Mr. Maple. Uh, probably not a shocker that we're offering this one again, Acer Palmatum Summer Gold. Now this is a classic uh, upright yellow from Girardelli Nursery that is one of the most heat tolerant yellows we do. Yeah, I love this one. You know how I love using yellow in the garden. This one's a nice six to eight foot upright yellow that's a little more sun tolerant. So once this is established out in the landscape and mm -hmm. garden, this one can handle 
a lot of sun for a yellow Japanese maple. And really gives you the yellow color that you can use to accentuate off your greens and your reds out in your landscape and garden, but it's also a tree you can put in a more shaded area to really brighten up those colors. Yeah, I, I love summer gold. I can't say enough about it. Um, a great smaller yellow. You know, hot blonde's probably my favorite larger growing yellow. This is probably my favorite smaller yellow because it fits in a lot of spaces. It's great for a container planting or a patio because it's not a gigantic plant. It tends to be very full and thick in its nature. So it works excellent in that, you know, high intensity, bright spot. You want to lighten some up in the garden. Uh, this is your plant. Also has an excellent kind of pinkish to red fall color too. Sometimes it can be very, very bright pink in the fall. Yeah, I, I love summer gold. It's a classic. And next up, we're bringing you another classic. That's an awesome plant but it's with a very unique habit. These here are Makawi Yatsubusa. Everyone knows the classic Makawi Yatsubusa. We try to offer it as much as possible on our website and we're bringing you back the lollipops. Yeah, we treat these as a completely separate product. So we list them completely separate to avoid confusion on Makawi Yatsubusa. As you can see, these are on that high grat or that higher race standard. And we're calling that the lollipop Makawas. Uh, really fun plant, uh, just a really unique way to grow them. Our photos of these are from a couple that Alan Castile bought from us, and he just has a great way of, uh, of looking at them. They're, he has them in containers with a little bit of uh, a raised look to them, but it just gives it a very unique raised element. So you get everything you like with Makawi Yatsubusa, but starting a little bit higher up. That tightly layering habit, uh, Makawi Yatsubusa being such a hardy plant, and then you get all that starting at a higher point, mm -hmm. gives it that more of that real unique animal feel on a standard out yeah. there in the garden. I mean, as conifer guys, you see this a lot. You see this a lot in the conifer world. We like doing it with Makawi Yatsubusas because it kind of has that same lollipop-like standard that you see on a lot of the, the small dwarf conifers. We love getting a Japanese maple on it. It really doesn't affect the height overall too much. It does start it out a little bit more elevated. It gives you some grounds to plant below this if you have hosta in the garden or something like that. So it gives it a little bit more of an elevated feel there in the landscape. And long term, it's going to look like a Makawa on a very straight trunk. So it's a very nice way to grow it. And it makes it a very clean look. I think it gives it a whole different aesthetic, though, in the garden than your typical low graft Makawa Yatsubusa. And if you want to do an underplanting under a dwarf Japanese maple, this is a great way to lift it up so that you can really put some sedums or something else small within a non invasive root system underneath it and then really still get the focus on the Japanese maple. For sure, for sure. So another one that we love here at our nursery, uh, you've seen us offer this one before, but it's back again. It tends to sell out pretty quickly. This is actually one we put a name here on at our nursery and it's Acer Palmatum Gold Digger. Yeah, this is one that a customer of ours, when we were doing a grafting class in Raleigh said, hey, I've got a cool tree that's got yellow bark. And we said, really? And he sent mailed us some photos and we said, dadgummit, we gotta get out there and yeah. check this plant out. And Laddie Munger uh, had found this tree as a chance seedling and allowed us to put the name Gold Digger on it. And this is a, such a cool plant with some really good bark interest. Yeah, lovely plant. As you get into the winter months, like right into the fall color, it has kind of a more red, almost typical coral bark type bark. So I get a lot of questions about that because it is red going into the fall. It gets to a light pinkish yellow throughout the winter on the bark. Now, one thing I like about this one a lot is that spring color. On the spring new growth of this one, you actually get a blushing of pink over the green. It's a really unique habit. And Excellent that, tree to be growing, but it gives it a really unique habit, especially amongst coral barks. And what Matt's talking about too is the leaves themselves have that blushing appearance. Yeah. And you get that orangey, peachy color on the new growth, on the bark, then go into that yellow with mm -hmm. a little bit of red down low. It's such a colorful winter interest Japanese maple that I think a lot of people are really gonna love with some really good yellows and oranges in the fall. I mean, this one can really get you some nice oranges and even some red sometimes, which gives you something unique because most of the coral barks are mostly yellow in the fall. What really impressed me about this one when we were evaluating, evaluating it is that Laddie's older trees even had like soft, soft yellow bark, which really just stood out in the landscape. Uh, I think it's one that really adds something to that coral bark section of Japanese maples. And it is a really fun one to be growing. Definitely check and, this one out today on the 10 of 10. And Laddie's growing the original one in a deep shaded area. Mm -hmm. And in that deep shaded area, I mean, you get that pale yellow bark all the way down to the base. And that really gives it something really special and, and different. And with more sunlight, you start to get more of the orangey kind of color or peachy colors on the bark. And if you're wondering, we were listening to the Kanye West song. We came up with a name for this one. <laughs> 
So we love full moon Japanese maples. We love getting them available as much as possible. The Acer japonicums, the Acer shirasawanums. Uh, thinking outside of Acer palmatum is a fun way to do it. Uh, although we have tons and tons of Acer palmatum, but these full moon Japanese maples are just amazing. I love them because they have thicker leaves. They have great fall color. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is one that's a classic. Acer japonicum takinogawa. Awesome round leaves to this. It's gonna have a very rounded leaf. It actually doesn't have some of the largest leaves, but it has very consistently big leaves. It's a very unique one. I have one in a prominent place right there in my garden. Very, very excellent fall colors. I've seen neon yellows with oranges at the same time. I've had dark reds and yellows at the same time. You know, it's not uncommon to be yellow, red, and orange at the same time in the fall color on this one. It is a showstopper. Sometimes you get that Hulk Hogan red and, red and uh, yellow splash there so you can go Hulkamania on it. I've had some years where it was neon yellow and neon red at the same time, and it just blew my socks off. And, and this is one that in our area can handle full sun here in Western North Carolina. For most people in hotter climates, morning sun, afternoon shade would probably be best for a lot of the Japonicum types. Mm. But the fall color on this, like Matt's talking about, is just outstanding. And that's true with a lot of the Japonicums because like I was talking about, they had that thicker leaf and that often gives them about a two-week to three-week window, uh, sometimes two-week longer than a, a typical Acer palmatum on fall color. Yeah, these leaf out with a red tassel flower. One thing I like a lot about Acer japonicum takinogawa is that that leaf shape and size reminds me a lot of some of the native Acer japonicums I saw growing out in the wild in Japan. Oh, it's yeah. definitely a selection made, but I like that it has that quality. It looks a little bit more like the native ones you see. Over at Nico uh, National Park. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw some excellent older Acer Japonicums that remind me of this one. And it just kind of has that feel for the Japanese mountains to me. Yeah, for sure. And this is such a classic that you really don't see in the nursery trade enough. I mean, we often, the Dancing Peacock is a, is a great full moon Japanese maple, yeah, but yeah. it's so much out there. You don't see a lot of these large rounded leaf Japonicums mm -hmm. out there in comparison. This one's a unique one in that they're not gonna be vitifolium in their size. So they don't get quite dinner plate unless you have a really good heavy shade area but it's very common for it to be a very large five to six inch foliage that's mm -hmm. very uniform. So it kind of has a, a bubbly rounded appearance to the overall tree because and of that very unique rounded and a very consistent shape too. Yeah, and like, just exactly like you said, Takinogawa has a more rounded shape where Vitafolium has a rounded, more, more oblong. Leaf. Yeah, yeah. And so very, very different, but very clean, crisp foliage with some really good fall color. So next up, we have another Deep South Classic here. Uh, we're bringing you Acer Palmatum Benny Sheehan. Now that name means purple smoke. It's not hard to see why this one's called purple smoke. This was found as a sport down in Alabama uh, by Harold Johnston, famous Harold Johnston who's named so many plants. He inspired Talon Buckholtz and a lot of people with some of his selections. And uh, Benny Sheehan's probably Harold Johnston's most popular tree, wouldn't you say? Yeah, and it was found at a garden center. He was going through looking through some blood good seedlings yeah. and saw this sticking up off the sport. Uh, as one sport coming off the side of it and he found it brought it back grafted it patented it got patent royalties yeah, yeah. on it for a number of years and it's a really cool variegated extremely heat tolerant variegated japanese maple this is one selected in the south and you know it can go zones five through nine but this is one that does really well in high heat situations which is really unique mm -hmm. for some of the red variegated Japanese maples. Purple smoke is a great color for this one. It kind of looks like what I envision when I hear Jimi Hendrix. Like it's got yellow swirls and purple swirls. It's got all kinds of crazy color in there. I, I love the color pattern on this one. Um, it, it is definitely a fun plant. I love the story about how it was found too. So you never know how you're gonna find something cool. This was literally a seedling that was red that he found in a garden center and had the foresight to graft that sport. And now we get to enjoy this tree all over the world. I mean, this one's popular. I saw this one at garden centers in Belgium when I was in Belgium. And it's kind of cool to know it came from a small, you know, backyard nursery in Alabama. And just a really cool plant though. Benny Sheehan, I think these will be popular, so don't wait on those. Always a popular plant when we get them in stock. So next up we have Acer Palmatum Butterfly. And this is a classic Japanese maple that uh, we've actually had off at Mr. Maple for quite a while. Yeah, we've been I think trying to get it available just because we hadn't had them back in stock for a minute. Yeah, so th these are going to be super, super popular on the website. Don't wait because they've been off for a while, as well as a lot of these other plants, Benny Sheehan, Seho. Mm -hmm. I mean, best thing to always do: check out as quickly as you can. Add the trees to your cart that you want. Check out as quickly as you can, and don't wait because when you add them to your cart, they don't save them for you until you check out. Once you check out and you've processed your order, 
then those plants are tagged with your name on them. But Butterfly is a classic Japanese maple, green with some white foliage. Can handle full sun where we're at here in Western North Carolina. If you start going a little further south, you may need to give it some protection from the hot afternoon sun. I think typically you're gonna get your best colors if you can give it early morning sun, late day shade. And this plant's gonna work zones five through nine. Awesome plant. When it first leaves out in the early spring, you can get a whole lot of white. It's not uncommon to get light pink on green, then fading to that white on kind of a, almost like cream on mint color. I actually like the color it is right now even better than the early spring flush because it's just kind of a cream on mint coloration. Beautiful tree here in the landscape. Actually has some excellent fall color too. If you get this one sided right and you get some great fall color on it, you're gonna get like a light pink on the white spot with a deep red on the green spot. Some excellent color patterns there as well. Uh, beautiful mid-sized plant, excellent for the container garden. You can put this on that shaded patio. Make sure if it's not getting in natural water to make sure it's getting water accordingly. Uh, but an excellent candidate for a shaded patio because you're gonna bring all that color up into there. And this is one that from a distance can give you some white and be very consistent at giving you some white even from a distance. So give you some good color contrast. Mm -hmm. But up close, the, just the leaf, every single leaf has a different, slightly different style variegation to it. Mm -hmm. And so it's a very fun tree to photograph, but it's one of those plants that I like to plant somewhere up close, somewhere you can really enjoy the nuances of the variegation, uh, which really make this tree really special. Everybody loves butterfly. It's a classic for a reason. Now I always do let people know if you see an all green branch on butterfly, remove that. Try to do it when it's early on. Once that does revert, it doesn't come back, but it's a super easy plant to grow. And if you keep an eye out for that all dark green branch, you know, that's the way to do it. And if you see a lot of uh, green branches on a butterfly, remember you may be over fertilizing it. So you may be an indicator to start uh, reducing your fertilizer amounts of nitrogen to help reduce the amounts of solid green reversions you get on butterfly. So another great one for the fairy garden, we have Cedrus Atlantica Sapphire Nymph. Now you can see why Sapphire Nymph works great for that fairy garden. Not only does it have the name Nymph, but it's a soft, like almost, I mean, it's a hard one to describe. It's like an emeraldy blue with some great shades in there. It has so many different colors on it during this time, but it's very nice and compact. So it fits great in that small corner for a fairy garden. I love this plant, bringing blue into those smaller spaces. Uh, it was actually selected and found by our friend, Pat McCracken. He put that name Sapphire Nymph on it. And this is probably one of the more popular conifers we do. Yeah, it doesn't I mean, they last. sell out pretty quick. They're always, always in high demand. Good drainage is key for the Blue Atlas Cedars. Mm -hmm. And this is a witch's broom that was found on a Blue Atlas Cedar with that dense, compact habit. Really makes it a really neat tree for a lot of small spaces or containers. For sure. Definitely check this one out. Uh, we've got a full lineup of conifers on Mr. Maple. You're probably familiar with that if you're watching this, but we actually do a ton of different conifers as well here at Mr. Maple. I think we're over three pages right now just on conifer content, so definitely check that out. And so Ginkgo Biloba Troll, another little dwarf here in some two gallon, nice size two gallons. This is an awesome little dwarf Ginkgo to fit in small spaces, great yellow fall color, and extremely salt tolerant, heat tolerant, pollution tolerant. I mean, I, I love the ginkgos. I can't, I can't get enough of the ginkgos. Hey, this is the best way to troll somebody. Send them a troll. It's a great gift. It's a fun ginkgo. It has that prehistoric feel to it. Trolls are always popular, probably because of the name. People love having, you know, that any of them that have the nymph for the troll or those mythical creatures there in the garden, they're always fun for gardeners. Troll, it, it kind of looks like Shrek's ear. That's what I like about it. All the foliage kind of has that cupped. It might even be coming from a troll ear, but it kind of looks more like Shrek's ear to me since I've seen Shrek. It's not gonna be ogre ear, troll ear, but you get the picture. Troll has that really unique rounded cupped leaf to it. And it just makes a really interesting tuft appearance to it. Makes a nice compact dwarf. Uh, we have some excellent size two gallons of these for any of the bonsai people that are into bonsai. You've already got a good start with some good lateral branching. And always remember Ginkgo's love lime. I always I said, and every time we talk about Ginkgo's, they love gardening lime that helps them affect and change the pH of the soil so they can take water and fertilizers and nutrients up more efficiently. And so check out our video on ginkgo care, general ginkgo care. And that's a great way to get started with growing some of these ginkgos. Really cool plants. And one that when this thing's in that bright school bus yellow fall color, mm -hmm. you're going to really enjoy. Troll, easy way to get kids into gardening. One, it's called troll, but two, you can tell them it's a prehistoric plant that was around in dinosaur times. And I promise you, your little boys or girls are going to want to come check out a troll in the garden. It's got that, that, that mythological creature, but it also has that prehistoric context to it. 
that is a fun learning thing, but they're also durable as all get out. Like Tim might've mentioned, they're salt tolerant. They're, you know, they're super sun tolerant. They're very cold tolerant. They can go to a lot of zones. It's an easy plant for you to be growing. It works in the ground, but also think about it for that patio garden. That's an excellent one for a container. We really appreciate you watching today's video on these 10 trees. Again, if you want to find out the full listing of today's uh, 10 trees, that's going to be the full listing of 20, go to mrmaple.com, click on the 10 at 10 link at 10 a.m. That's when all these trees go live. If you want some of these plants, make sure to check out quickly because they don't last long on a lot of these varieties. We try to list as many as we can and as many, we have large quantities of all of these that we're talking about, but we've got 40,000 people on our email list who are gardeners who love these trees just like you do. So it's always good to act quick so you don't miss out. Hey, if you're watching this live, we're currently doing another giveaway. It's hashtag Japanese maples. You can just put it all as one phrase there. Hashtag Japanese maples. We'll be searching for winners. We're going to be giving away some more gift cards coming up soon. So that's actually active right now. Uh, so we hope you enjoyed this quick look at it. Getting mixed up on my months. I'm starting to say kids' birthdays. But we hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, take care. God bless. And have a great day.